Welcome back inside the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, where, Dan, there is never a need for a weather forecast. No, it's uh, actually kind of a nice day outside for early November here in Minneapolis. But, uh, no, this game is indoors. The weather is perfect. And immediately the pressure is going to fall on the defense of the Vikings. Chargers have won the toss. They will receive. That's Darren Sproles returning kicks at a 25-yard per attempt average. And this is Sproles from the one. To the 20 and a big hole up the middle. 30, 40, and dragged down at the 45-yard line by Vinny Churchu. A big return to get Phillip Rivers and the Chargers offense some terrific field position. There's the fourth-year quarterback. Three touchdown passes in the win over Houston last week. Ten on the year. LT, the lone back behind Rivers as the Chargers begin first down from their own 45. This is Tomlinson out of the backfield. Out of bounds just as he crosses midfield and pushed out by Chad Greenway. Pickup of seven on that first play, second and three. And Greg, they will miss Winfield's tackling. He might be the best tackling corner in the league, and they will miss him greatly today. Rivers throws to the near side, and that's incomplete intended for Chris Chambers. It'll be third and three. Greg, I want to go back to that opening kickoff. I don't know where this drive will end up for San Diego, but a lot of credit goes to Ryan Longwell, the kicker. He forced Sproles back into the middle. If Sproles would have broken to the sideline, that would have been a touchdown. Ryan Longwell, uh, you don't give kickers props very often, but he saved a touchdown on the opening kickoff. Especially you don't give kickers props very well, often. <laughs> well, you know what? That's... I just want to have credibility. I'll give it to them when they deserve it. Third and three. LT bounces to the outside. Jukes back inside and comes up short. Cedric Griffin up from the quarterback position, made the stop and kept LT short of the first down. Boy, when LT busted it to the outside, I thought this was going to be a first down for sure. But look at that support. And that is a sensational tackle by Cedric Griffin. Chad Greenway was closing in, but wow, you don't see one-on-one -on -one tackles like that on Tomlinson very often. Moeldy Moore deep for the kick from Mike Cyphers. High kick. Moore calls for the fair catch and makes the catch at the seven-yard line. So the Minnesota Vikings will go on offense, and there's the Viking quarterback, Tavares Jackson, in his second year out of Alabama State. Two touchdown passes, five interceptions, and trying to find the groove on offense. First down from the seven, that's Peterson behind Jackson. Jackson will throw. Throws, and that's complete across the 15 to about the 18-yard line with Robert Ferguson making the catch. First down from the 19, and here's Adrian Peterson's first carry of the day. Right side, trying to get across the 20, and he does, but just barely. Well, I thought Brad Childress was really smart on the first play of the game, calling a pass play. He has to demonstrate that Jackson can throw to set this up, to set up Peterson. And this, again, looked like it was going to be a much bigger play than it was. And again, we see corners coming up and really making good plays. That time it was Quentin Jammer. There is Brad Childress in his second year. He calls the plays. But they must demonstrate to this San Diego defense that Jackson can throw or there will be eight people in the box all game long. Peterson on the move. And now to the top of your screen, short drop and the quick slant almost intercepted. Ooh. Almost picked off by Marlon McCree. Wow, McCree looked like he was the receiver. Talk about establishing inside position as the defender. Marlon McCree is completely inside the receiver. Look at that. He looks like the offensive player. Trying to force that ball into Sidney Rice, and McCree had it in his hands and just couldn't hold it. That was a turnover waiting to happen. So now Jackson will work out of the shotgun on third and eight, and Chester Taylor is in the backfield with him. Jackson throws far side, and that is complete. And that's Taylor, and Taylor about a yard short of a first down. Boy, a Quentin Jammer again coming up with a good support and a good tackle. Man, the uh, 
cornerbacks in this game so far have come to play. Boy, that's a, uh, that is really a fine tackle. Remember, Jammer got up on the run by Peterson before. Yep. So now Sproles back to take in the kick from Chris Cluey. Sproles does double duty for the Chargers, returning kickoffs and punts, and this one is short, just barely across midfield. Let's see where it went out of bounds. There's the San Diego head coach, Norv Turner, has also had head coaching stints in Oakland and Washington. His first with the Chargers. San Diego starting from their own 47. They started from their 45 in the last possession. This is LT, and LT squeezes through, goes to midfield, and let's go back to that punt by Chris Cluey. Well, I think Antonio Cromarty, who's lined up right here on the outside, watch him come in. I think he gets a right hand on the ball. You could hear a double thud. I actually think he got a hand on the ball, and Cromarty came up, and he was plodding and clapping. This guy had a monster game last week, Greg. And that explains a 25-yard kick by Cluey, a guy who averages almost 45 a kick. Second and six. River throws far side. This is Legadu Nane, and Nane all the way inside the 30-yard line. The rookie out of Boise State goes 22 yards, and it's a first down for San Diego. And I don't know if it's because LT isn't in there or whatever. LT's faking it to the other side. They lose track of Nane. The defense so keyed into LT when he blocked on the other side of the formation, he took a couple guys with him, really opened up the left side of the field. He's having a laugh with James Lofton, the wide receiver coach. Nane, fifth round draft pick out of Boise State. First down now, Chargers at the Minnesota 28 or 29. What a great name, too. Throwing far side, and that is complete. That's Brandon Manu Maliuna, the tight end. He's inside the 25 to the 22. There's a guy who's a bit of a load to tackle. Manu Maliuna. And pronounced. He's, well, he's closer to 300 than he is to 275. Let's put it that way. <laughs> when a defensive back or a linebacker sees him with a football, that's... That's an oh no moment. That's one of those, oh, why me? Six yard pickup makes it second and four. And we get whistles. And a false start by the Chargers. False start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty is still second down. It's Antonio Gates, the tight end. Even pro bowlers can make a mistake every now and then. The crowd noise really wasn't that loud. I've been in this building when it's a whole lot louder. This, I think right now this crowd's kind of giving the Chargers a bit of a break. Let's see if that false start gets them going here a little bit. The backup puts San Diego at second and nine as we come up on nine minutes to play of a scoreless first quarter so far. Quick pass to the outside, River to Chambers. Chambers down the sideline, and a penalty marker comes flying in from long range. Well, that sure was initially a nice job by Chris Chambers. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 41. Ten-yard penalty is still second down. Well, that's a penalty on a blocking foul from a superb blocking back, Lorenzo Neal. Now, for 15 years, Lorenzo Neal has been the man. There he goes right off left tackle. He's coming in from behind. Oh, and he pushes Ben Lieber in the back. Yep, he ran right up the back of Ben Lieber, the outside linebacker. So dual penalties on this drive for the Chargers on two of their best players. First, the false start for Antonio Gates. Then Lorenzo Neal, the block in the back. And now the line of scrimmage all the way back to the Minnesota 36. Second and 18. Play fake to Tomlinson. Rivers throws out to Tomlinson. Left side and out of bounds just short of the 30-yard line. And with that, we take it to James Brown for our first NFL Today report. J.B. Well, 
with Vince Young and Jeff Fisher and company intent on bringing that new streak to an end. Here comes the crowd. Finally. Third and 13. Rivers throws down the middle. That's complete to Nane to the 15-yard line. And enough for a first down. Boy, what a good job of holding on to the football when you know there's a safety waiting at the end of this route. And that is exactly what Nane knows. When you're coming in here, come from the right. He knows, and in this case, it's a linebacker. It's E.J. Henderson. But you know that post pattern into the middle of the field in the intermediate distance. There's somebody waiting to stick you the minute you get there. Nice job of holding on to the ball. Good throw by Rivers. A look at San Diego's potent red zone offense. Double tight end now. Well, so many weapons. Here's LT, right side, to the 10, to the 5, and out of bounds just inside. Oh, there's the five a yard hit. line, and it's going to tack on some yardage. Oh, Dwight Smith. Dwight Smith lost his head. LT was clearly out of bounds, and he knocks him down. After the ball was dead, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 24 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic. First down. Mike Carey, our referee today, which means you're bound to get a clear description of what happened. Boy, look at LT. Gets a good block downfield, but that's, that, that's so obvious that uh, you don't even need any commentary. Dumb, 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 dumb. So the line of scrimmage now about a yard and a half. It didn't cost them a lot of yardage. <laughs> it's only about a yard and a half penalty. On first down, LT. Not going to get there on this one. Dwight Smith coming in to make the stop on that one. And Dwight Smith, uh, <laughs> LT, look, LT stole Dwight Smith. Hey, calm down, buddy. Dwight Smith was back there in the face of Phillip Rivers. LT, 106 career rushing touchdowns. That's tied with Jim Brown for fourth place all time. And he's four behind the great Walter Payton. Wow. Two icons. Looking to take control of that position right now and not going to get there. E.J. Henderson with the stop this time. Well, you got to remember who you're trying to run against. This is the Minnesota Vikings, and if they can do anything, they can play the run, especially between the tackles with the two monster Williams in there. And E.J. Henderson has really come into his own. He's his team's leading tackler. Let's see a test the wills if they try to run again. The Vikings don't surrender many rushing touchdowns. LT spinning, still comes up. No, touchdown. went right in behind Lorenzo Neal. That's only the third rushing touchdown allowed by the Minnesota Vikings this season. And number 107 on the ground for LT. Just look at that graphic. That's the immortal Jim Brown. Right in behind Lorenzo Neal. Oh yeah, he reaches out easily, gets the ball across the plane of the end zone. The crowd here didn't think he got there, but he did. So Nate Kading has come on to add the extra point. And it is good. I love the fact, Greg, that they kept running, running, running. San Diego, 53 yards in 10 plays. LT with his 107th career rushing touchdown. That's good for fourth place all time in the National Football League. Keep in mind, they overcame two penalties on that drive as well. Andre Allison is deep for the Vikings. Standing at his own goal line for the kick. And Allison from a yard deep. Fakes the pitch, goes right up the middle. 30, 40. Across midfield and deep into San Diego territory before Cletus Gordon brings him down. That's a 60-yard return. Well, the special teams coaches from both teams are unhappy. And Cletus Gordon saves a touchdown. Look at that. He faked the little backward pass. Look at the way the middle opened up. 
shook the tackle of Kading and only cleared his court. And he was the only San Diego Charger that had a shot of stopping that. Well, field position has been uh, going like hotcakes so far today. And here are the Vikings starting just inside the San Diego 40-yard line. The rookie Peterson behind Tavares Jackson. Jackson looking for running room on the left side. Inside the 35. And that is whistled down at the 34-yard line. Adrian Peterson is not afraid to leave his feet and jump over somebody. You know, you're in a perilous position when you're in the air. There he goes again. He just leaps right over the top of Marcus Harris. He did that in a game last week, and that was really close to being a... That looked like a live ball, didn't it? It did. But a pick up a five, and it's second and five. Marker flies. Peterson doesn't get much running room. And this is going to go against the Chargers. Sean Merriman appears Outside. to jump. Defense number 56. The enforcement results first down. And that'll be a Minnesota first down. Important for these Vikings to keep going. The San Diego Chargers have been killing their opponents in the first quarter. They've outscored their opponents 49-0 in the first quarter over the last four games. Which, of course, then just sets up Sean Merriman and Sean Phillips. Phillips isn't suited up for today, but two of the best edge rushers in football give this defense a lead in big trouble. Jackson throws complete inside the 20 to the 21-yard line with the catch, Sidney Rice. How about, how about the rush up the middle that time by the Chargers? We've got people flying through the air. Check this out, coming right up the middle. Who is that that takes a somersault? I, was that Sean Merriman? Let's see who it is. It's Sean Merriman. Gets totally upended. We're seeing some acrobatics here. Second and three. Peterson, right side. talents on display once again to New York all right JB thanks very much you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars so far this year meanwhile first and goal for Minnesota at the five Peterson deep in the backfield but the give is to Tony Richardson Richardson goes to about the one he bounced into the end zone he was down here's what set this up the great speed of Adrian Peterson. This plays off tackle. Watch him bounce it right there. Sean Merriman, who has the contain, can't believe that he lost the edge to Adrian Peterson. That is really, I mean, Merriman had the contain. He thought he had it. He, I'm, sh I'm sure he's still scratching his head that Peterson had the speed to get the corner. On second and goal, he gives to Peterson. Touchdown. Adrian Peterson's sixth rushing touchdown of the season, his seventh overall, and Minnesota right back up with the San Diego Chargers. Well, you get a good break with the kickoff return, but can you capitalize on a break like that in the good field position? The Vikings certainly did. Ryan Longwell's extra point attempt is good. 2.48 to play in the first quarter. First down for the Chargers. They start from their 20-yard line. Through a series of poor kicks and great returns, they've had better field position than this. They start from their own 20. This is Tomlinson. Tomlinson across the 20 to about the 22 before Dwight Smith comes on and makes the stop. Well, you can see a big difference in Ladanian Tomlinson and his production whether they're playing at home or on the road. The column on the left, before the start of today's game, you can see he had all his touchdowns at home. He finally cracked one. He got a roadie here on their last possession. They'd like to uh, improve on those numbers here in the Metrodome. 
on second and eight. Rivers throws it away. Nobody on this side of the field. Was he outside of the box when he let go? Well, Mike Carey's trying to find out now. Out for intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket. The ball got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Mike Brad Carey. Childress thinks not. <laughs> it's Mike Carey's call. Ooh, that's awful close. He's, it goes tight end to tight end. I would say that if anything, Philip Rivers was straddling the line. He made, you know, that is just, that becomes a very vague area, what's in the pocket and out of the pocket. Certainly, I can understand Brad Childress and his exasperation. And now we have a penalty marker in the secondary. Did the play clock wind down? Delay. It did. Offense. Five yard penalty is still third down. Well, that what happens is the play clock is running while Mike Carey is giving his explanation about whether or not Phillip Rivers was out of the pocket and the Chargers were unaware that it had already started. And now it's North Turner's turn to be living. I believe the words, what are you doing, just came out of his mouth. Look at the penalty so far. San Diego's racked up four already. You know, the clock only stops if there's a penalty. So when Phillip Rivers threw that ball away, the clock operator starts the 40-second clock. And nobody realized it was running. Chargers now at their own 17-yard line. They need the 30 for a first down. And now another whistle. I think we're going to get another explanation from Mike Carey. Correction. There is no foul for delay of game. After my announcement for the intentional grounding that was not called, did not reset the game clock. So it'll be third down, five yards out. Well, so now Mike Carey is saying the clock should have been reset because of his explanation. If you're talking I don't care who you're rooting for. And if you're talking about fairness, that's certainly the way it should be. The clock shouldn't be running while the referee is talking. The clock operator saw no flag, no penalty, so he kept it running. Uh, I believe that's a gray area, they call that. So instead of three, third and 13, it's third and eight. And time running out on Rivers. Three, down to two, down to one. He's not going to get this off. And he didn't. That's unbelievable. Philip Rivers, do you know where the 30s, do you know where the play clock is? He's, somebody better point it out to. Well, and, that, that was just a case where they had so much motion going on. Philip Rivers couldn't snap the ball because the motion guy was running between he and the center. This is the first time Philip Rivers has ever played a football game in a dome in the NFL. Well, now what are they doing? They pick up. They picked up that flag, and now they reset the clock to 25, and it's third and eight on the blitz. The screen incomplete. Penalty markers down in the backfield. And this is going to be a holding call against the Chargers. Well, this is some hodgepodge of a series. Offense number 73 is declined. Fourth down. That's on the left tackle, Marcus McNeil. Mike Carey is really good on the mic, but I think he should have given us a, a, an explanation as to why a flag was thrown for delay and then picked back up. But then we'd have been well into the next play then. Well, then we'd have had to start the play clock all over again after his explanation. <laughs> Moeldy Moore is deep for the kick. That was hardly an artistic sequence by anybody. Cyphers booms this one out of there. Moore all the way back to his 15-yard line. And back to the 20. We have a situation here. Yeah, we are being told 
something I guess maybe everybody figured out by now but the clocks here inside the Metrodome are malfunctioning they're having an issue with the play clocks that would explain a little bit of that last series so let's hope they get them straight away meanwhile Jackson for Peterson and Peterson not very much big Jamal Williams number 76 back in the middle of that San Diego defensive line made the stop. We have got some run stopping defensive tackles in this football game between Kevin Williams and Pat Williams on the other side for Minnesota and then Jamal Williams anchoring the middle for San Diego. Now what's unusual here for the Vikings they're facing a 3-4 a defense that over in the NFC they don't see very often. There's only three teams in the league that play it very much. New England, Pittsburgh and the Chargers. That pass almost intercepted. Jackson missed connections with Peterson out of the backfield. Stephen Cooper almost had himself a pick. Whoa. It'll be third and nine. You see little misses and then you see big misses. That was a big miss. That ball was nowhere near the intended receiver. I don't know if this came off. Did he get his, oh he got it. I'll tell you what, he got his arm hit, didn't he? Just as he's releasing it. He got his elbow slapped just as he was releasing the football. So now Chester Taylor is into the backfield for third and long for Minnesota. Jackson steps into this one and throws and oh what a catch made on the far side of the field by Sidney Rice about whom Brad Childress just couldn't say enough yesterday. Boy bad finger what bad finger. How about that laser from Tavares Jackson? That was tight coverage and he throws a real strike. He locks in all the way but look at that coverage over there and he throws an absolutely perfect pass even though Quentin Jammer is all over Sidney Rice. Brilliant throw. Last 25 seconds of the first quarter. And movement on the far side. Jim Klein saucer. Uh, Matt Wilhelm was across the line too. Yard penalty is still first. He was drawn across. That. Now we're going to have a discussion. Yeah, because Matt Wilhelm was definitely in there. Well, it's going against Minnesota. Mike Carey is not <laughs> going to change his. Uh, you no. And he's going to wind the clock, too. You saw the look, though, on North Turner's face. He initially thought that penalty was going to be against his defense. So we'll see if the Vikings get this playoff before time expires here in the first quarter. It's first and 15. The give is to Peterson. Trying to turn the corner on the left side and knocked out of bounds. At about the 30-yard line by Carlos Polk. Second and 14 for Tavares Jackson in the Minnesota offense. Chester Taylor in the backfield behind it. Jackson throws this side, and that's complete to the tight end, Vishanti Shanko. And Shanko fights his way across the 35 to the 37. Kudos to the Minnesota offensive line there. They gave him a good, uh, good look. Let's check out these two guys through the first quarter. You can see Tomlinson has a touchdown, but wow, only 19 yards on seven carries. That's uh, that is the kind of yardage that LT is not used to. So now third and eight. Shotgun Jackson with time throws incomplete. Missed connections on number 84. Andre Allison Clinton Jammer was there to give the hit just in case. And the Vikings will kick it away. It is going to be a process that the Vikings offensively are going to be going through for a while. So much youth at the key positions. Quarterback, receiver, a lot of rookies playing for the Vikings. Louis. Spoils for his own 11. Hit at the 20. Forward to the 21-yard line. First down for Rivers. And the Charger offense from the 22. Straight drop. Deep down the sideline. Has his man open on the other side of Chris Chambers. 
Chris Chambers didn't know where the football was initially because it's a broken coverage. Watch Chris Chambers right here. He's going to get turned loose, and my Lord, is he open. But he didn't realize the football, football was back to the inside. That's a rookie corner out there, Marcus McCauley. And he bit on a little move earlier, and he was badly out of position. And boy, did that work out well for him. Remember, Chris Chambers is the new kid in town in the San Diego offense. And he and Rivers haven't had more than a couple of weeks to get to know each other. Well, there was contact there, wasn't there? That Encroachment. Defense number 93. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, when you see that many guys move at once, that is a great hard count by the quarterback. That's all on the quarterback. The center can maybe, oh, he can squeeze the football, but when you get that many guys moving, you give kudos to Phillip Rivers. He barked out the count hard enough that he drew him off sides. That is very frustrating for a defensive lineman. So now second and five for Rivers. out to about the 38-yard line of first downs. I don't remember watching a kicker go directly up the middle of the field before. Wow. Not one variation. There was uh, a lot of excitement packed into that short little body. Michael Turner in the backfield now for San Diego, along with Lorenzo Neal. And this is Turner, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. E.J. Henderson, the middle linebacker. Well, this is not read and react. This is a run blitz. E.J. Henderson is going upfield all the way. The two linemen in front of him go to the inside. He scrapes to the outside right into the hole. And as luck would have it, exactly where the Chargers were trying to run the football. You know, if you got a screen set up the other way, something like that, you get burned. That time, the Vikes guessed right. LT back on second and 13. Under pressure, throws it away. That screen never really developed, intended for Ladanian Tomlinson. Well, that's because of blitz off the corner, and Phillip Rivers had no chance but to dump the football. The screen's going to the right, but off the left, take a look at it. Here comes Tank Williams, and Phillip Rivers realizes, I got no chance. I got to get rid of this thing. It was good awareness by the Chargers quarterback to dump the football. Here is where E.J. Henderson says the Vikings have been having problems. Even in third and long, they've been having trouble getting off the field. Haven't been able to stop anyone. Third and 13. Rivers throws far side. Incomplete intended for Antonio Gates. And again, the Vikings come with pressure. The pocket for Phillip Rivers started to get mighty tight. All right, let's take a look here. Ray Edwards working his way against Marcus McNeil. He gets around the corner for some pressure. There was pressure right up the middle, and Rivers goes down hard. So the Viking, Viking defense gets off the field on third and long. Moeldy Ward deep for another boomy kick by Mike Snyder. From the seven. Oh. Penalty markers fly. What a terrific hit down deep by San Diego's Michael Turner. Whatever you called it, Greg, what a punt by Cyphers. That ball just would not come down. 57 yards in all. And how about, how about the elevation? So here's Mike Carey. During the return, holding by the receiving team number 59, half the distance of the goal from the end of the run, they retain possession, first down, timeout. Penalty is on. Heath Farwell, it'll back the Vikings up a bit. 12.07 to play here in the second quarter. Greg Gumbel, Dan Deerdorf at the Metrodome, and see where these drives have been starting for Minnesota. It's their second time starting inside their own 10-yard line. 
Adrian Peterson behind the quarterback gets the handoff and is hit almost immediately by Igor Olshansky. Man, I've been I've been waiting for you to call his name. How do you not love a defensive lineman named Igor Olshansky? Good look there at Jackson taking the snap. He handled that flawlessly, but Adrian Peterson nowhere to go. Olshansky playing this game in the Minnesota backfield. Bad block. He just broke across the face of the blocker right into the play. Minnesota just 29 yards on the ground today. They do much better than that. There's movement up front. Ball start. Offense number 81. Half the distance to the goal is still second down. The tight end, Vasanti Shanko. We, told, we showed you that snap. The exchange from Matt Burke to Tavares Jackson brings into focus all the more that broken finger by Jackson where he said, yeah, he's got to be a little careful of it on the exchange. Yeah, sure he does. But he handled Hey, what, but what have we seen? A missed block here on one play, puts him back, and now a, a false start. That's that's not the index finger of Tavares Jackson. Second and 13. Peterson. Up to about the three. Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams, who told us yesterday, you know, when you when you come to the ballpark, you want to play against the best. And he's looking across the line at Adrian Peterson. Well, and he is the best. There's not a nose tackle in football, the equal of uh, Jamal Williams. And he's a 10-year guy, and he had double knee surgery. There's Teddy Cottrell, the uh, defensive coordinator for the Chargers. The guy that's been calling defensive signals in this league for a long time. Third and 11. They're going to run it. Peterson slipped as he started to get underway or make a Chester Taylor by mistake. In any event, Vikings will be kicking out of their own end zone. It means more good field position for the San Diego Chargers. And, and, and you know, I think that play calling really reflects the fact that Brad Childress knows he's got a second year quarterback. He's got a lot of rookies in the game, a lot of youngsters, and he did not want to make the catastrophic error in his end of the field. Minnesota bounce, but it's not going to get to midfield. It's out of bounds at about the 44 or 45 yard line. 9.50 to play in the second quarter. Good football teams take advantage of this field position. Rivers give to Thomas. Thomas is buried at the 45 yard line, maybe even lost a yard. Well, we went into this game knowing that it was going to be fun to track LaDainian Tomlinson and Adrian Peterson. They both have a touchdown so far, but let's see a little bit about what's going on. Starting second and 11. Pump fake by Rivers. Rivers going deep down this side. Oh, what a defensive play made by Dwight Smith. Vincent Jackson had a touchdown taken away. Well, Dwight Smith got up to celebrate, and he should celebrate because he broke up what would have been a touchdown. It's just that Phillip Rivers underthrew it just a little bit. That ball would have been maybe a foot farther. That would have been a touchdown. But good recovery by Dwight Smith. Go ahead and give him some credit. He was beaten initially, but he got himself back into it. Third and 11. And right now, the Chargers are struggling against the worst pass defense in the NFL. River, six straight incompletions. Standing back, throws this side. Incomplete at the 30, whisk or flag down as he makes it inside the 25. This time, Jackson pulls it in. Let's check the marker. Yeah, Jackson's defender fell down. Was he pushed down? It's yeah. against Jackson. Yeah. The guy That's who's covering him ends up on the turf. Number 83, 10 yard penalty is still third. Yeah, down. they're going to call Vincent Jackson for a push off. That would have been a 21-yard gain and now nullified. Well, when your defender ends up on the turf, it makes it kind of obvious. Let's take a look at it. Right. Well, that isn't the reason the Griffins slipped. Boy. They look, from that angle, it sure didn't look like there was a whole lot of interference going on. Nonetheless, third and forever. Third and 21. 
Chargers at their own 45. Rivers pump fakes again, goes this side. Jackson off of his hands. He was walking the sideline. It's incomplete. And again, that pass from Phillip Rivers too far to the outside. I'm not sure that that ball could have been caught and stay in bounds by Vincent Jackson. So Mike Cyphers has been launching some some incredible punts today. Moeldy Moore is inside his own 10. Let him go, let him go. Fair catch ball for it. And made at the 11. 8.27 to play in the first half. Minnesota, San Diego tied at seven. Brad Childress's defense standing up and being counted today, Dan. Oh, he's got to be thrilled with the way that they are defending Phillip Rivers and the San Diego passing game. On first down, Jackson to throw. Peterson, 20, 25, out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Phillip Rivers right now is 6 of 14. They are playing out of character and well. This is Peterson looking for Lenny Clement. Now can they, can that defensive effort get some help from the offense? Yeah, I'll guarantee you Phillip right now is more than a little frustrated at their inability to come up with something big. He's had open guys and they, they just are that little bit out of sync on the day a passer rating of 55.4 for the season he came in at 90.3 right second and ten Dangerously close to Ooh, being picked off. That ball was in play. Sean Merriman right in the middle of it. Boy, that thing was just floating in the air. That baby looked awfully tantalizing to somebody there. There comes Merriman from the left. He just gets up. He comes back down. Still has the coordination. Oh, Jacques Cesaire almost had it. Ooh, that ball was just all over the place. Third and ten. Jackson going to go deep down the near sideline and overthrows Andre Allison. Well, he actually he did the right thing, but we've got another flag. Decline, fourth down. Got a holding call against Minnesota. That'll be declined. But he had to put a lot of air under this football. Quentin Jammer had everything underneath. There's Quentin Jammer, number 23, running with Allison. So really, he had no choice but to put it out there. Yes, a perfectly thrown ball would have been a completion, but better to be long than short. Whoa, look at this kick. Wait, Wilhelm could have done that. That was ugly. And it's going to come to rest inside the 30-yard line. Did I date myself with Hoyt Wilhelm? <laughs> I got the point. This is a knuckleball punt. That is a total shank off the outside of the foot. 39 yard kick and now from his own 32. Rivers gives to Tomlinson and Tomlinson gets nothing. It'll be second and 10. Well, hey, LT takes a handoff and he's staring right at Pat Williams. All 320 pounds of him. And I think most people thought the San Diego offense would find a little more success through the air. Nobody's run the ball effectively against Minnesota. And no one's running the ball effectively no. today. You know, they, they, you know, the funny part of it is they've only been given up 2.9 yards to carry all season. They're playing the running game before. Rivers on the move. On the move. Throws it away. Kenechi Udeze in hot pursuit. Boy, and you can just see Philip Rivers getting up, going back to his blockers, going, what's going on here? Come on, guys. 
talking about that Minnesota defense. San Diego had a 53-yard scoring drive for its touchdown. Four other drives have netted 13 yards. There goes Williams to the sideline in a passing situation. He doesn't participate in the nickel. Stuffing the runs is job. Once again, Minnesota trying to change things around on third down. Rivers going to go deep down the sideline. It is incomplete. Well, there was contact downfield. That's why the receiver wasn't in Phillip Rivers screaming that there isn't an illegal contact call right there. Take a look at that. Vincent Jackson against the rookie Marcus McCauley. And there was all sorts of contact well beyond the five yard area. And I thought while the ball was in the air, they got away with one there. Well, any more. Deep. This Cypher's kick is going to bounce inside the 25. <laughs> and roll out of bounds at about the 15 yard line or so. 5.58 to play in the first half of this scoring game as for of the tie game as you look at some numbers from around the league. Drew Brees, that's a lot of football in one half. Already be over 200 yards. It's like the quarters with 84 yeah. yards already. Boy, I already touched it 15 times. That is a, a day's work. Lee Evans always a big play threat. Roy Williams in there as well. So the Vikings now from their own 16 yard line. Adrian Peterson in the backfield. Jackson going to run. To about the 25. Boy, Minnesota is just working like heck to improve their field position. They have just had horrible field position here for a while. If they could string some first downs together and just make San Diego play on their side of the 50 a little more often. Well, there was some question as to whether or not Jackson was even going to play today and he had that finger wrapped yesterday when we saw him. You know it'd be a totally different story if that was on his non throwing hand. Here's Peterson. First down and more. 35 across the 40 penalty marker back up the field. Oh boy if this backs the Vikings up there they're just killing themselves. That's an 18 yard pickup looks like it's going to be called back. Boy, that was the play they needed. There are two fouls, both on the offense. Holding, number 40 is declined. Holding, 64 is accepted, 10 yards, still second down. Anthony Herrera, the right guard, flagged for the one that they will take. Yeah, they get Klein Saucer too, and Herrera's going, why do they, why are they picking on me? Good God, there good he is get, right Mike. there on the left. Oh, and you can see he just reaches out with his left hand and catches Matt Wilhelm, the linebacker, and just drags him down. He was into him good, had a good hit, but you got to keep that left hand at home. You just can't grab the guy that openly. So now a second and 11. Peter. Just across the 20 yard line, Adrian Peterson, who comes into this game 5.8 yards a carry the best in the NFL is right around three yards a carry for the day. Well you know a lot like Barry Sanders you just keep giving a guy the ball because for all those little two and three yard runs you know somewhere there he's a broken tackle away from going 60 or 70. And you can see where he ranks this season and it's a brilliant start for this rookie from Oklahoma. Team with just one first down this quarter from the shotgun. Rivera incomplete. The pass intended for Sidney Rice, and that'll bring on the punting unit. Well, that's there's outside pressure, but then there's the pressure that comes right up the middle in your face, and that's what Tavares Jackson was trying to deal with right there. No way he could step into that throw. He had to just flick it, trying to get rid of it. I think Sean Merriman was right in his face. So Darren Sproles back at his own 35.
Kluwe, who's had some questionable kicks to say the least. Gets off a great one this time. Holy oh. mackerel. <laughs> All the way back inside his 15 yard line is Sproul to the 25. And twisting his way across the 30 to the 31 yard line. A 68 yard punt by number five. The noise level inside the dome in Indianapolis. Wow. I'm not, that'll, that'll break some decimal meter. First down for the Chargers. And LT straight ahead across the 35 to the 37. Well, he meets Ben Lieber there, former San Diego Charger. That was, that was a muscle run right there. Let's go right in off right guard. Ooh, just gets a little crease right there and Lieber in a good position. You say muscle yeah. run, everybody involved too. Second and four after the six yard game. LT again. Straight up the middle. Fred Evans with the stop. It was EJ Henderson telling us, here's Lorenzo Neal. And Dan, we've seen so much of him over the years, 15 years, and, and EJ Henderson still feels he's the best lead blocker on any team. Well, and he's right. He's still I mean, in the old fashioned. True fullback. There aren't many of them left. Remember some of the great Sam Gash and some of the guys like that. Lorenzo Neal still gets it done even at this age. Another big third down on defense for the Vikings. Third and four. Tomlinson on the slant. Oh another fine defensive play. This time Cedric Griffin. Well. I think everybody thinking that with Antoine Winfield out of this game, this secondary is really going to be victimized. Anything but. These guys are really playing outstanding football. That is exactly how you defend that inside pattern. You make contact, you disrupt his route, and then you're the one that works to the inside. Ten consecutive incompletions now for Philip Rivers. Look at this kick by Cypher. Comes down inside the five. Tracked down at the goal line. Is it saved? Yes. Antonio Cromarty down there to cover. And they're talking about whether or not it went into the end zone or not. Oh, now they're calling touchback. This is Cromarty. He's in the field of play. Oh, there is right the toe. The player's foot was on the line. Touchback. That's right. That's Touchback. a good call. Couldn't see that initially, but his right toe touched the line. A great effort by Antonio Cromarty. 2.24 to play in the first half. Philip Rivers just mentioned 10 straight incomplete passes, 6 of 17 for the day, not what he envisioned coming into the dome. Well, 59 yards against a team that's been averaging, averaging now, giving up 288 yards a game. And now, Tavares Jackson. They just can't get any field position. And Peterson with room to run across the 25 to the 27-yard line, and that will likely bring us to the two-minute warning. Vikings aren't in a hurry to get this play off, and so the clock will wind down to two minutes to play. Neither of these teams has called a timeout as yet here in the first half. Two minutes to play at the Metrodome. Quentin Jammer has re-injured his hamstring, we are told. And he is out of this game. Meanwhile, Adrian Peterson brought down by number 42, Clinton Hart. Well, again, San Diego is sitting on the Minnesota running game. Clinton Hart, the strong safety. When, when you see the strong safety making a uh, making a tackle for no gain or a one-yard loss, pretty pretty easy to see eight in a box. Ted Cottrell is going. I, I want to see if Tavares Jackson, if he can throw the ball effectively enough to beat us. With Quentin Jammer out, Antonio Cromarty, who had a big day with two touchdowns a week ago against Houston, is in the secondary. 35. And they're going to run it. Peterson. Hurdles. There he goes to the line. And just across the 30 to the 31 yard line and a first down. 
Man, that is, uh, it has been a while since I've seen a running back so easily leave his feet and jump over somebody. That, let me tell you, when you can come down at an awkward angle on one leg and really hurt yourself as a running back. Jacques Césaire, the defensive end, has limped off of the field for San Diego. And now they're going to use a timeout. So the Vikings oh. use a timeout, 46 seconds to play in the first half, trying to get something started. So the Chargers are still looking at Jacques Césaire on their side of the field. Meanwhile, Vikings break the huddle. And Césaire, one of the valuable guys in their rotation. He's one of the defensive linemen that they have in there in nickel and pass rushing situations. Let's see how Brad Childress plays this final minute. Pump fake, throwing out here to the side and incomplete. Intended for Chester Taylor out of the backfield, and we have a marker down. Further downfield. Yeah, got a flag clear down at the San Diego 45. Got a holding call. Somebody in the San Diego backfield. Before the pass, holding defense number 24. Five yard penalty, automatic. First down. Cletus Gordon. Cletus Gordon here working against Bobby Wade. Yeah, that'll do it. That, <laughs> that'll yeah, do it. That'll pretty much do it. That might be impeding his progress. Right. Neither team doing themselves a favor here in the first half. Taylor in the backfield on first down. Jackson. With a little time. Now they're running. 40. Diving across the 45 and a first down. And so much for sliding. And is Jackson all right? He's not he moving. doesn't look it. Tavares Jackson, rather than sliding, goes for the first down. And he got it, but at what cost? Well, he just threw himself in there head first and took a pretty good shot. So the Vikings take a timeout. They look at Tavares Jackson, 29 seconds remaining here in the first half as he goes for the first down and takes a tremendous hit. Well, Jackson with a smile on his face as he's taken off. And you know, there's a, you know, you see the Vikings quarterback of the future. You know, he missed two games earlier this season with a groin injury. He missed the game last week with the broken finger. And now he gets carted off this week. Well, Brad Childress says, you know, decisions to make is Tavares Jackson, the long-term quarterback for this football team, staying healthy as a big part of being a team's go-to guy. Dan, we were here last year when the Tavares Jackson era began. We sure were in Minnesota. Now yeah, you're right in the game against the Jets in the middle of December last. Bollinger under the gun and goes down back at the 37-yard line, courtesy of Luis Castillo. And right now, I would kneel on the football and head to the locker room. Initial report from the Minnesota Vikings is a head injury for Tavares Jackson. He'll be evaluated at halftime. There is a snap that goes over the head of Bollinger, trying to track it down, and he does at the 20-yard line. Well, maybe they'll kneel on it now. Offside, defense number 97, five-yard penalty is still second down. Mike Carey says Ryan Bingham was offside. But Bollinger wasn't even looking. The ball went right over his shoulder. Yeah, Matt Burke just snapped it. That was a very catchable ball in the shotgun formation. Well, they got a break with San Diego being offside. San Diego got a touchdown a week ago from an errant snap on an on a attempted punt. Sailed over the punter's head. They're still being aggressive. Bollinger. And that will complete across midfield to Bobby Wade. And Bollinger wants to spike the ball and stop the clock. And he does. So the clock is stopped with five seconds to play in the first half. Well, actually, I think the game clock is saying seven. And again, we the clocks have been malfunctioning. One stadium clock shows seven seconds. 
Ryan Longwell has a 55-yard field goal to his credit this year. Well, this is out of his range. <laughs> We're Come on, Dan. We're indoors. You could catch a draft. It'd be 65, be 64 yards or so. And play clock is winding down now on Bollinger. He got it away in time, throws it in the sideline, and that is complete and out of bounds. Sidney Rice with the grab, and now Longwell is going to come onto the field. Well, give Minnesota credit. Brad Childress was. He was aggressive, which he's been all year. This is going to shape up to be about a 53-yarder. No, 58-yarder, excuse me. From 58 yards away, Longwell got it away. And it comes up just short. And they're going to return it. This Here is Cromarty, <laughs> and Cromarty down the right sideline with a head of steam to the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! That would be 109 yards on the return. And Brad Childress, you could fry an egg on the top of his head. His field goal kicking team just went to sleep on a long field goal. You got to act like you're on a punt team and you have to cover it. And Antonio Cromarty, with two touchdowns last week, continues his streak of being developing into one of the more dangerous guys in the NFL with a football in his hand. He returned an interception 70 yards for a touchdown a week ago against the Houston Texans, recovered a ball in an end zone, and now returns a field goal 109 yards for a touchdown to end the first half. He is two inches from stepping on the back line of the end zone. You couldn't be any farther back in the end zone. And this field goal coverage team, mostly linemen, and there's no way he, watch how close he comes to stepping on the back line, fielding that ball right there. I mean, what a sensational piece of athleticism to catch that ball. A tough, tough end to a first half where the Vikings, as I said, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the San Diego Chargers. And suddenly it's 14-7 San Diego as we get underway in the second half. Andre Allison, three yards deep in the end zone. 15. Slips and falls at about the 17-yard line. You can tie it. There is no 110. <laughs> Can't be done. Ain't gonna do it. First down. Brooks Bollinger, the quarterback. Throws it out here and comes up short of Tony Richardson, his intended receiver. Bollinger playing because Javaris Jackson was taken off the field late in the first half. And, and he gets hit from both directions. From the right by Cooper, but watch the left, Sean Merriman. Uh, watch Merriman's knee. First the left, then the right. Both seem to make contact with the face mask of Tavares Jackson. So unfortunately, he took two big hits from both sides, and he was at a bit of an awkward angle, and he's out. This is Adrian Peterson. And Peterson across the 20 to about the 22-yard line with the first half numbers. The Vikings out rushing the Chargers. 91 total yards of offense for the San Diego Chargers and only two and a half yards per carry. The Minnesota defense is playing well. And Luis Castillo now in pain on the ground with his hands reaching down toward his right knee. Wow, and this is, this is a real rock on the San Diego defense. So we'll take a break here, 14.35 to play in the third. They will look after Castillo, and we'll be back after this. Defensive end Luis Castillo being helped off the field by the Chargers training staff. He, he tried to take one step to walk off, 
And that's all he could do. He got the one step and now he doesn't want to put that right foot on the ground at all. We looked at all the replays and we can't see where it happened. There was a huge pileup. Seven or eight people all around his legs. Meanwhile, Brooks Bollinger looking at a third and four. Chester Taylor in the backfield with it. Bollinger with time, throws, and that's complete to Robert Ferguson, number 89, and that's right at the first down marker. And appears, well, let's take a look and see. Ferguson looked like he was waving that football, trying to get it across the first down and marker. He did. Watch Ferguson after he catches. Good job of Bollinger looking off to the right and then coming back to the left. Reaches. Right there, he reaches <laughs> that ball out. Let me tell you something, Robert. That is a high-risk deal there. But that's, you, that's, and you know what? That's a first down move, though. Oh. Bollinger. Pass far side, and that is incomplete. Well, people are just jumping all over the place. Was that's that Stephen Cooper coming in on that rush? That's a smart thing to do, Dan. I mean, well, we I, saw Adrian Peterson do it. Well, I don't think it's a good habit for Peterson, but this jumping over a, a, a potential blocker, darn right. Watch this. That just, that's just getting clear over the guy. That, that was a tremendous, tremendous move by Stephen Cooper. Second and ten. That's why as a running back, when you go to go block a guy, you got to hit him in the chest. You can't go for the cut. Bollinger. Throws on the run. That's complete to Ferguson. Ferguson across the 35 to about the 36. Seven yard gain on the play. Well, we've seen Bollinger play when he was with the Jets. He's mobile, he can run, he, and he's a pretty effective guy. That ball just a little bit back behind Ferguson, but he reacted to it and made the hands catch. I don't think Brooks Bollinger is your franchise quarterback. But he's a good guy to have on your roster. There's Tavares Jackson looking on from the bench. 33. And this is Peterson. Peterson into the open. Midfield. 45. And there he goes. To the 10. Touchdown. Pretty good. We talked about it in the first half. That's why you keep giving him the ball. Keep giving him the ball. He's one missed tackle away from a touchdown. That time behind really good blocking. Matt Burke really does an effective job at the point of attack. And then after that, it's just arm tackles. And that's not going to do it. Ryan Longwell's extra point kick is good. 12.44 to play in the third. Adrian Peterson's first touchdown of the day, a one-yarder. His second one a bit more dramatic. 64 yards. And the Vikings and Chargers are tied again, this time at 14. Darren Sproles from four yards deep in the end zone. 15. Dragged down at the 20-yard line. Eric Frampton with the stop on special teams. Adrian Peterson talks it over with teammate Sidney Rice. Six plays, 83 yards, the last 64, courtesy of the rookie out of Oklahoma. And again, he ran to the left side. He had a good block at the point of attack from McKinney, Hutchinson, Matt Burke pinned him back to the inside, and away he went. And when Adrian Peterson gets in the open field, his speed is dazzling. So now it's Rivers and the Chargers. First down from their own 20. Lost the handle. Who's on the ball? Minnesota. Minnesota. Chad Greenway, number 52, came up with the ball. Keep in mind, Corey Withrow is playing center because Nick Hardwick is out with a foot injury, but Corey Withrow, a veteran quarterback, the ball seemed to hit Phillip Rivers right in the hands. It came up, Withrow delivered it. For some reason, Rivers just didn't seem to be able to handle it. Again, though, maybe he brought it up in a wrong position or whatever. It's 
Always tough to lay blame on something like that. Minnesota has not made a habit of turning takeaways into touchdowns. Here's Peterson. Peterson to the 15. Look at the way this guy runs. <laughs> this guy just uh, is Brad Childress telling us the knock. Take a look at the lost fumble by Phillip Rivers. Tied for most in the league with a couple other quarterbacks, Steve McNair and Jason Campbell. But this Peterson, Brad Childress saying, you know, the knock on him when he came out of college was he runs too hard. <laughs> Have you ever heard anybody say anything like Brad that? Brad Childress says he practices but too then, hard. He's he, got to slow him down. He's reckless. He just, and that last run, he just threw himself in there. Second and five. Peterson trying to change direction, stumbled in the backfield, and Matt Wilhelm was there to stop him. I think he tried to do a Barry Sanders cut right there. That was, uh, I think he was just trying to make a little too big a move right there. He got a little too much on the outside edge of his left shoe. Got to have your feet a little more underneath you than that. Peterson on the sideline now. Chester Taylor in the backfield on third and seven. And now Taylor flanked to the top of the screen. Bollinger throws this side. That's complete. Number 81 is Vasanti Shanko out of bounds, but enough for a first down, first and goal, Minnesota. Well, Rick Bollinger has got things moving. This pass was behind Shanko, and he does a really good job of A, catching it, and then B, leaping over the would-be tackler. That is hard to do when you have to go back and dig out that pass that's a little bit low and behind you. I feel like we've arrived at the high hurdles championship well, somewhere. I, we have seen more leaping in this game than I've seen in a while. First and goal for the Vikings just inside the 10. What we're seeing is a lot of good play. Chester Taylor straight ahead. Inside the five to about the three. And right now you can feel it for the Vikings. They are exuding confidence at the moment especially offensively. Their line is getting some traction. They're moving these guys out. And Phillip Rivers trying to figure out how he and Corey Withrow happened to misfire on a center quarterback exchange. Now Taylor and Tony Richardson in the backfield on second and goal. out is that did you hear a whistle I did not hear a whistle it goes over to the San Diego Chargers Marlon McCree has the football well that's how quickly momentum can disappear that's how quickly it evaporates time out on the field well, the air has gone out of the balloon on the Minnesota side of the field. LaDainian Tomlinson back onto the field for San Diego. First down charges from their own six. And this is LT. Nothing doing. Pat Williams, the first to hit him. Let's go back and take a look at the fumble. Chester Taylor doesn't look like he's got it put away. From the left, 20. McCree, watch his hand go up. The ball's coming down and it just drops right into his arms. It really just dropped right out to Marlon McCree who was on the ground. And we've got another injured player out on the field. This time it's Ray Edwards, number 91 for the Minnesota Vikings. No. There's a lot of football left to be played this season. And Tony Dungy, talk about a guy that won't get carried away with the moment. You know, it's just as much the way uh, North Turner said. We asked him about Sean Phillips, would he play today? And he says he wanted to play. But he said Sean Phillips would just go out there and play 10 snaps, hurt himself again, and we'd lose him again for another couple of You're weeks. exactly right. North Turner, they're looking at his board. Trying to figure out how do I get my superstars untracked because Minnesota has held these guys in check. Ladanian Tomlinson has 13 carries for 34 yards. Antonio Gates doesn't have a catch yet. 
He's been removed from this game. Second and 11. Rivers to throw. Throwing over the middle, across the 20, and that's complete to Chris Chambers for a first down. Well, that's a heck of a catch by Chris Chambers. Talk about digging one out. Working against the rookie McCauley, but the ball's kind of low. Ooh, that ball came loose. Ooh, I think the red flag might come flying. Oh, they're well, actually they're being ruled incomplete. Okay, the officials got together. They gave it to him initially. I think it's pretty evident that Chambers does not maintain possession of this ball. Yeah, it actually made contact with the turf. The hand, by, the hand yeah. by McCauley just reaches over and yeah. uh, bounces it off the turf. So now the conversation Mike Carey having with North Turner. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass being challenged by San Diego. Well, now we flip to the other side. North Turner is going to challenge it. Back in the Metrodome, here comes referee Mike Carey. He has made his decision on the challenge by North Turner. Here we go. After the review, the receiver did not have complete control. The ball hit the ground. Incomplete pass. San Diego is charged with their first team timeout. It, it doesn't matter that it wasn't Chris Chambers' fault that the ball touches the ground. Marcus McCauley gets a hand in there while Chambers is trying to establish possession. McCauley comes in and forces the ball to touch the ground prior to Chambers having complete possession. So instead of a first down for San Diego, Rivers is looking at a third and 11 from his own five. And he's trying to get everybody lined up properly. Antonio Gates, he sends to the other side of the field from the shotgun. his own end zone no doesn't get it away and he runs it out to the five and slides down at the 10 yard line how did he escape from the end zone and we've got a flag down i don't know because this isn't exactly the personal most foul major face mask defense number 94 15 yards there it is right there oh First no down. kidding pat williams Pat Williams jerked ahead of Phillip Rivers all the way around. You know, as a defensive lineman, you're just reaching in there. You're just trying to grab anything. I don't think he said, hey, I'm intentionally going to grab his face mask, but what a break for the Chargers. What a break for San Diego. Phillip Rivers is hardly having the game of his life. Uh, no, I don't think you can call 6 of 18 the game of his life. And again, I can't believe that Minnesota has so totally removed Antonio Gates from the picture. But he escapes from the shadow of his own goalpost. First down, he gives to Tomlinson, hit early behind the line. E.J. Henderson. Well, let's go ahead and see how the big three are doing in this game. We just chronicled Rivers and his completion percentage. Ladanian being held in check even though he does have a touchdown and Antonio Gates only thrown to once this entire game Well, the reason that Rivers isn't throwing is because he's covered Rivers with a quarterback rating of 43.5 as we speak second and 11 This is Chris Chambers. Chambers with the catch comes up just short of the 30-yard line. 7.35 to play in the third. Welcome to those of you just joining us here in the Metrodome. Greg Gumbel and Dan Deardorff. It is a 14-14 tie. The Vikings and the Chargers in a game that has had as many twists as you can possibly imagine. The biggest play, Antonio Cromartie at the end of the first half for San Diego returned a missed field goal for 109 yards an NFL record that completion by Rivers his first in his last 12 tries 35 oh look at 
look at the defensive play. What a rush put on by E.J. Henderson. Incomplete pass is the ruling. Again, right up the middle and jumping over the block of LaDainian Tomlinson. Here comes Tomlinson, but he goes low. And Henderson just jumps over the top. I'm telling you, as a running back, you got to stick him in the chest. You go low, they go high, your quarterback goes down. Now here's Mike Cyphers, who's been kicking lights out for the most part today. Seventh front. Look at this one. Mowelde Moore backing up all the way to his 10-yard line. And down at about the 18. Carlos Polk makes the stop. The man in the middle of that picture bends over with the baseball cap on backwards is Tavares Jackson, who started this game at quarterback for Minnesota, injured late in the first half, has been replaced by Brooks Bollinger, who is the quarterback now, Adrian Peterson behind him. First down, Vikings at their own 18, and here's Peterson. Explodes to a hole on the right side, out to the 25-yard line. It was a heck of an effort by Jackson trying to get a first down rather than just sliding the way quarterbacks can. And he gets it from the front by Stephen Cooper, and he gets a knee to the head from behind by Sean Merriman. Yeah, you got to admire his courage. He was going for it, trying to move the chains for his team. But sometimes as a quarterback, you got to take the safe and easy way out. On second and four, Peters running room. 30, 35, and a first down. Sean Merriman makes the stop. This San Diego defense gives up less than 90 yards a game rushing, seventh best in the NFL today. Minnesota has come up with 163 on the ground. Well, he's got some great blocking by his offensive line. That time Matt Burke came all the way around. Take a look at this. LaDainian Tomlinson has 100 yards fewer than Adrian Peterson in only five fewer carries. He has been bottled up. On first down, Peterson to the left. Running room. Another first down, close to midfield. Matt Wilhelm pulled him down, but this rookie is fun to watch. Well, we talked to Steve Hutchinson, they're all pro guard, and he goes, hey, Peterson is a beast. He used the word beast. He said he had a 70-plus yard touchdown run, came to the sidelines, and he's not even breathing hard. He's just smiling. He said he's just. He said it looked like he just took a walk in the park. There's Hutchinson right there, one of the five best offensive linemen in football. This guy, talk about a beast. He's the guy. He's the beast. Chester Taylor in the lineup now. Bowling gives to Taylor, right side. Midfield bounces off two tacklers inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. And Greg, what did he? This is this is hard, hard running. And I'm telling you what, that's just good hard running. Don't go for the sidelines. Take a hit and go back into the field and pick up more yards. Well, as these Vikings have made have 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 really had their problems again today with injuries. Steve Hutchinson pointed out lack of continuity, continuity has taken its toll. Yeah, it really has. It, it, again, it's been a revolving door quarterback. Second and two, Peterson back into the lineup. He gets the football. And he's to the 40, and that's enough for a first down. Adrian Peterson telling us that he just he just can't step out of bounds. He said, I want to deliver the blow. I'm not a receiver. In other words, I'm not a pinata where they could just come up and take their shots at me. I want to deliver the final blow. Do you remember you asked him about the speed of the game? And he said for the first couple of games of this NFL season, it was pretty fast. He says, but now it feels like college again. He did. He just did that. You know that? He wasn't being in any way egotistical when he said I think it was just an honest assessment, didn't you think? He's that. Ball into the throw on first down. Going to go deep. Has his man wide open as Rice. Inside the five. Touchdown. Oh, how close did he come to stepping out of bounds after he caught that ball? 
Boy, did he have to do a tightrope down the sidelines. Working against the coverage of San Diego. Whoa, he was, he was close. He drifts so really low. <laughs> and what a leap. Where did he leave the ground? He left the ground just around the five yard line, real close to the four, and elevated himself into the end zone. Minnesota has taken the lead. 3.07 to play in the third. Rice, his second touchdown catch of the season. Longwell for the extra point. The Minnesota Vikings, two and five on the season, showing all the heart a coach could want here today. Brad Childress told us that Sidney Rice has a 40-inch vertical leap. Well, I'll tell you, his horizontal leap isn't too bad either. Again, a mistake in the San Diego coverage just turning him loose. He is at the four and a half yard line when he takes off. Unlimited potential for this rookie from South Carolina. Drayton Florence getting burned on the play. Brooks Bollinger, his first touchdown pass of the season. And the Vikings lead 21-14. You know, Rice came out after his sophomore year. He just turned 21 in the last couple of weeks. And every time you talk to a Viking player, they go, he's just a kid. He's, man, does he, he has an unlimited future, doesn't he? Minnesota, 180 total yards here in the third quarter to nine for San Diego. And right now, Norv is having flashbacks to that three-game skid where his team just didn't play good football. Darren Sproles is deep. This is Sproles, and he won't run it out of the end zone. 3.07 to play. There's the picture atop the AFC yeah. West. Dan, you and I will be in Kansas City a week from today. And that game of some concern to Chargers fans. Although I don't think the Chargers players are watching it. They got their hands full. Phillip Rivers drops, throws, sideline. This is complete to Vincent Jackson. Well, that was a good job by Phillip Rivers of identifying the open guy and delivering a good pass. And right now, the San Diego passing game, they just need a few good plays to get back in sync. They are so far out of joint. Prior to that play right there, they have 100 yards total offense. 100 yards through almost three quarters. That's, that's hard to believe for this machine that goes up and down the field. Especially when we talk about the weapons these Chargers can break. Rivers throws on the slant. That's complete. The penalty marker flies. There's Antonio Gates. Let's check the marker for the first time today. Let's see if it counts. And little hands to the face. Defense number 23. Five yard penalty, automatic. Penalty is on cornerback Cedric Griffin. Catch here. The penalty is declined. Play results in the first down, right? So finally, Antonio Gates gets into the mix for San Diego. And that's two completions, two straight first downs for a Charger offense badly in need of a jump start. There's Antonio Gates, just 10 receiving yards today, well, averaging 91 on the year. I think right now they're trying to figure out whether to accept that penalty or not that would have a first down affixed to it. And they do. So the ball just across the San Diego 45. in the backfield and Rivers looked like he covered it up. He did.
It looked like Ray Edwards coming in from the left side of your screen. He's going to come in from the left. Phillip Rivers, there's the pump. But before he gets a chance to throw it, great job by Ray Edwards of swiping the football out of his hands. He gets around Marcus McNeil, and Phillip Rivers has no idea he is there. And Rivers beat Williams to the ball, barely. A loss of 10, second and 20. Play clock winding down. And they call a timeout. They had to. They had guys in motion. Gates was in motion going up the lineup. That would have been a penalty. That is the second timeout taken here in the second half by San Diego. Right now, a lot of head scratching going on with the Bolts. And keep in mind, these San Diego Chargers have been on a roll. After they won their opener against Chicago, they lost three straight, then won at Denver, went home and beat Oakland and Houston. Second and 20. Rivers throws up the middle, and that's complete across midfield to Chris Chambers to the 48-yard line of the Vikings. And you know the tackle is by Marcus McCauley, the rookie corner who's having to play because Antoine Winfield is out. He gives the inside release to Chambers, comes in to make the play. I'd say the Vikings had themselves a pretty good draft. Their first-round pick is Peterson. He's got a touchdown. Their second-round choice, Sidney Rice, he's got a touchdown. And their third-round pick, McCauley, is starting and playing the whole game at quarter today. That's a lot of production for three rookies. San Diego, two out of nine on third down today. Looking at a third and four. Penalty marker. The pass over the middle is complete to Manu Maliuna. That's enough for a first down, but let's check the flag. Norv doesn't like it. <laughs> Norv does not look thrilled with this call. If you're a body language expert, it sure looks like it's on San Diego. Illegal formation. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. So that'll back up Rivers and the Chargers to the San Diego 47. And again, you can just you can just sense the frustration in Phillip Rivers. Every time something like this happens, he's this is an offense that isn't used to struggling like this. Look at that, more penalty yardage than rushing yardage. That's no recipe to a win. That's not supposed to happen when you've got Ladanian Tomlinson. But Third and nine. Credit the guys in purple. They're causing it. River steps up, throws far side of the field. Did he stay in bounds? It is ruled a catch just inside the 35 by Chris Chambers. How in the world did Phillip Rivers get that ball into that area and Chambers get both feet down? Well, did he? That looks like a pretty good catch. Did he maintain control as tell. he went across the sideline? They're going to get a playoff 19-yard pickup. Yeah, it looked like a catch. It, that was some effort. Rivers on the move. Looking, looking, throws, and completes it inside the 30-yard line to the 27 to Manu Maliuna. Well, that was some effort by Philip Rivers. Along with Dan Deerdorf and the rest of our CBS Sports crew, Greg Gumbel at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis, where the Vikings hold a 21-14 lead on the Chargers that are on a drive. As we start the fourth quarter, they are at the Minnesota 27. We have had some big plays in this game. On second and two. And a little movement up front. That looked like encroachment. Pat Williams. Encroachment. Defense number 94, five-yard penalty, still first down. He returned it 109 and three-quarters yards. 
He almost stepped on the back line and ran it all the way home. Now on first down, LaDainian Tomlinson jukes back inside and goes inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. San Diego in the midst of their longest drive of the day. This one about 63 yards and counting at second and six. And I would say, as far as San Diego's psyche, a drive that's very much necessary. They had been sputtering and going backwards and going nowhere. This is their first productive drive in a while. Tomlinson, the deep back behind Rivers on second and six. Rivers going to roll, looking, end zone, comes up short. Vincent Jackson had outrun the coverage, and Rivers bounced it to him. Third and six. I don't think that's Philip Rivers' strong suit, throwing on the run. And uh, that time he, he just, he had a guy, but just severely underthrew it. And the crowd will be into this one. San Diego, you see it there, three out of ten on third down. But you can see they've been nearly ten yards a drive. Rivers going to throw, sideline, it is incomplete. Well short of the intended receiver, Vincent Jackson, who was well covered, and Rivers picks himself up off the deck. And, and that pressure kept Phillip Rivers from putting, putting this football where he wanted to. Again, you can see Lorenzo Neal is right in front, Tomlinson rather, right in front of him. He couldn't step into it. That ball was a good four to five yards short of where he wanted it. And this and will be a 36-yard field goal attempt by Nate Cady. And that graphic gave you a good look at the kind of pressure Phillip Rivers has been under all day. Cady's kick on the way, looks good, is good. Field goal by the Chargers pulls them to within 21-17. Andre Allison deep for the kick from Cady. Allison from five yards deep. Back in the Metrodome, Minnesota's Vikings starting from its 20-yard line. Adrian Peterson. I wouldn't stop handing it to him. Uh, he gets the football. Oh. 25. To the 30. Still on his feet. 35 and down at the 37-yard line. Just exactly what we talked about before. The guy will not go out of bounds. I mean, he is really pinned into the sideline here. I don't, it's not in his DNA to go out of bounds. First of all, that's sensational blocking. But right here, he, he's pinned in. No, he won't do it. He goes back into the field to take somebody on. Man, Steven, I love the way this guy carries Steven the Stephen Cooper. <laughs> I mean, nine out of, Greg, nine out of ten guys would have stepped out of bounds right there. 203 rushing yards against this terrific San Diego defense today. To the 40. Midfield. And into San Diego territory to the 45-yard line. Another first down. Marlon McCree brought him down. Every one of you people up there standing up applauding. I hope you appreciate what you're watching. First of all, look at the hole. And then two missed tackles right there by the Chargers. Matt Wilhelm got knocked off by Marlon McCree. You know, Dan, that's that, that's that intangible as Chester Taylor comes in. The great running backs make you miss. Yeah, you're well, absolutely right. First down now, Bollinger to throw. Out here into the flat, and that's complete to Taylor. Taylor inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. And how's this for an answer by the Minnesota Vikings? Well, it depends. There are two flags down back at the line of scrimmage. The Vikings are Holding. acting. Yeah. Offense number 83, 10 yard penalty, still first down. That's on Jeff Dugan. That's Dugan working against Sean Merriman. And that's a takedown. Wow. When you force a guy into a forward somersault, <laughs> <laughs> and Merriman comes right up pleading for the flags, there was a little. You know, once Merriman decided to go, he went with flair and came up pleading for the laundry and got it. So now it's first and 20. Peterson back on the field. 
Peterson with the handoff. To midfield. And again, Luis Castillo had to leave this game with an injury. He's their left defensive end. And it seems that uh, Minnesota, who had success running the ball prior, is really grinding it away now. Clock continues to move, coming up on 11.50 to play in the fourth. San Diego, you know, let's be realistic. This is a team that was giving up 89 yards a game coming into today. They're not used to having anybody crank it on them like this. Peterson shakes the tackler at the line of scrimmage and goes forward for another three yards before Antonio Cromartie makes the stop. It, Greg, is it just me or does the first guy never seldom gets get this guy? Never get. Okay, you took it to the next level. He makes the first guy almost always comes up empty. Left is the favorite side. For Adrian Peterson when he works. And you can see a lot more balance today. They love to go behind McKinney and Hutchinson left, but that is a really balanced run game today. Bollinger sets up the screen. Taylor with blockers inside the 35 and out of bounds at the 32 yard line. That's a first down for the Vikings. That was a good looking set up to a screen all of a sudden it looks like a jailbreak right up the middle but totally planned there's a good block by Matt Burke by Hutchinson rather Matt Burke is downfield and Brooks Bollinger yes man I love a good looking screen they are really really attractive plays so first down for the Vikings now to the 31 of San Diego. 10-20 to play in the fourth. Peterson back into the lineup. Peterson gets the call. Bounces off one tackle. Inside the 25, inside the 20, he lost the football. Picked up by the Chargers and out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Date Drayton Florence. For the second time this season, Adrian Peterson has gone for over 200 yards rushing. Ribble throwing deep near sideline. Oh, what a catch made by Chris Chambers. Well, there's the veteran against the rookie, and the veteran knew when to go up for the football. And it's going to come back. Chris Chambers really effectively moved into position for the ball. Marcus McCauley was not able to react, but it doesn't matter. The Chargers call for a false start. Will be assessed a five-yard penalty, and the line of scrimmage is the 16. I don't know why all coaches aren't bald, because that's where you'd pull your hair out, right there. So the penalty. Backs the Chargers up and makes it first and 15. Brad Childress obviously already did. Lost the football. Oh boy. For the second time today. There have been a lot of fumbles today. Well, that's the second time that Corey Withrow, the center, and Phillip Rivers have not handled the exchange. Minnesota recovered the other one. This time San Diego was able to cover. Again, if you weren't with us in earlier, Nick Hardwick is the Pro Bowl center. But Corey Withrow, I mean, this guy's been around the league eight years. He, he's not some rookie. He's a former Viking. He's a good, solid football player. Second and 17. That's LT in motion. Rivers to Tomlinson, out to the 25-yard line. Darren Sharper, terrific. Veteran safety makes the stop. And in a situation like that, that's where LT looks like Marshall Falk. That you can split him out and turn him into a receiver. And that was a poorly thrown pass by Phillip Rivers. How about that, that was catch? a circus catch by Ladanian Tomlinson. That ball was so far behind him, that should have been an incompletion. Third 
third and seven. San Diego, three of 11 on third downs today. Rivers backing up, throws. Tomlinson with the catch and out of bounds. Well shy of first down yardage. Tank Williams forced him out, and San Diego has to kick it away. Well, LT, his momentum carrying him towards the sidelines. He really, no way he could have held up short of going out. Going back to what E.J. Henderson told us yesterday, third down has been killing the Vikings. They have been exceptional on third down defense today. Well, they are trying to make a stand. The Weldy Moore. Another fine kick by Cyphers. Moore back to his 12. To the 20. Up the sideline. 40. Slowed down a little bit, breaks free, and now will be pulled down at the 46-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Mike Cypher saved the play by slowing him down. San Diego punter Mike Cyphers, should the Chargers rally to win this game, can be credited with saving a Moeldy Moore punt return for a touchdown. On first down, back to Adrian Peterson in the ground game. Cuts inside a block, inside the 40, up the sideline, and he's gone! on that scamper 251 yards rushing on the day for the rookie from Oklahoma Longwell's kick is good I've been a network broadcaster for 24 years and every now and then you see a performance where you say to yourself I'm just glad to be here and that's what we're seeing here. First of all, look at the blocking. Klein Saucer out front. Take a look at the blocks by these guys. And then when you're to the second level and you're wearing number 28 for Minnesota, you are gone. Herrera with a really good block. Ryan Cook, a really good block. Matt Burke sealing it back. But once Adrian Peterson is into the second level, if he hasn't been slowed, or he hasn't been rerouted, he is trouble. Look at the feet, look at the cut. But if he hasn't been rerouted, if you have not changed his course of direction, the safeties and corners in this league cannot match this guy's speed. And yep, it's rookie day for the Vikings. 28-17. No rookie has ever had two 200-yard games rushing. And let's not kid ourselves. He didn't exactly do it against a chump change defense. This San Diego defense hasn't let anybody run the ball. And his first effort was against the Chicago Bears. Dan, let's not kid ourselves. 300 is within reach. Yes, it is. This is Garen Sproles. He will not run it out of the end zone. And San Diego will start from its own 20-yard line. And he's not used to having the other guy have more than 210 yards than he does. Tomlinson has 37 yards on the day on 15 carries. Pass out here, incomplete, completely out of sync. LT wasn't looking for it, it was behind him anyway. Second and 10. What a job this Minnesota defense is doing. Over the middle. Incomplete. And right up the middle again comes the kind of pressure that a quarterback hates. E.J. Henderson. Watch him. Right up the middle. Lieber gets picked up. Henderson is free. And once again, Phillip Rivers just is ejected from the pocket. Yeah. He's right out the back door. I know this doesn't surprise you, but every once in a while, you'll see a game where there's no reason in the world why the Chargers shouldn't come in and continue on the role they've been in. I agree. But 
any given Sunday is more than just the name of a bad movie. And they have to go home next week and entertain the Indianapolis Colts. Third and ten. River on the move. Throw. Intercepted at the 25-yard line. Charles Gordon, the second-year defensive back out of Kansas. Again, Leslie Frazier's defense for the Vikings forced Phillip Rivers out of the pocket. He had to do a jump pass off his back foot. There goes the pocket. He's out, jumping backwards, nothing on the football, trying to force it to Antonio Gates. And a penalty marker has been dropped, maybe for some excessive celebration by the Vikings. But it's going to back Minnesota up to the San Diego 40-yard line. The defense of the Vikings here, you just cannot praise them enough what they've accomplished. Peterson. Still on his feet to the 33-yard line. And right now, San Diego is going for the football. Sean Merriman was the last guy, but along the way, they're all clawing at the football. Well, guess what, guys? I'd think about tackling the ball carrier first. While you're clawing at the ball, he's grinding out eight yards. 259 yards rushing. The sixth best performance in NFL history, and he's still working on it. Well, how many guys are, are in the position? Greg, you just can't take your eyes off of him when he gets the ball. Don't reach for a potato chip when this guy's running. Dan, he may get it again. Here, second and two. Peterson to the outside. Penalty marker flies as he's run out of bounds at about the 34. Holding, offense number 62, 10 yard penalty, second down. You will see a holding call a lot on a play that's designed to go into the middle and then the running back bounces it to the outside. Because you're trying to take your guy one way and all of a sudden he's trying to go another way and you don't know why. Because, you know, he sees the ball carrier as a lineman, you don't. All you know is you just don't want him to go that's that That's right. And you hook him, and you end up getting called for holding. So the ball is backed up now to the 43-yard line. Okay. Rivers and Gates. Well, Rivers was trying to get the ball to Antonio Gates on that last interception by Gordon. Second he, and 13. Coverage was just too good. And the pressure on Gates, too much. Chester Taylor is in the backfield. This is Taylor. 40. 35, and he's on the go. To the 25. 20. Inside the 15 to the 10 yard line and a first down. First and goal for Minnesota. Keep in mind, this was Chester Taylor's team until Adrian Peterson got drafted. I'd say he's more than a capable substitute. He's much more than that. But again, folks, that's just unbelievable blocking. I think right there, even that was a miss. Right there, that touch by Marlon McCree was the first time Chester Taylor had contact with a San Diego Charger. You cannot have a ground attack oh. like they have had today without a strong performance from the offensive line. They're killing. This is Taylor again. Straight up the middle. Inside the five to the two. This group, and boy, Cook, Herrera, Burke, Hutchinson, and McKinney. Whoa, they're playing a football game. This is when a football team feels at its best, oh. when they're running the football down the throats of the opposition. Well, especially when your season, to this point, has been the disappointment that the Viking season has. To beat a good football team, wow. Dan, immeasurable what that does for your confidence. The San Diego defense gives up less than 89 yards a game rushing. Minnesota has 335 on the ground today. On second and goal, Taylor to the five and thrown back. Igor Olshansky led that charge. And we have a marker down in the end zone. Well, this defense right now is missing two of their better players. They lost Luis Castillo early. You know, we lost him earlier with a leg injury. And Sean Phillips, the linebacker, never made Unfortunately, conduct. Defense number 29. Swinging at a player. 
unsportsmanlike against Drayton Florence, the quarterback. First down. I don't want to correct myself. Sean Phillips did make the trip, but he's not playing today. First and goal. Taylor, left side. Who's out there to greet Chester Taylor? Adrian Peterson. Darn right. The Minnesota Vikings with four touchdowns in their last six possessions. Longwell's kick is perfect. 4.28 to play in the fourth, and the Vikings are putting this one away, 35-17. Take a look at it again, just power running. Why, a great block out there by Dugan. Longwell's kick. Sproles on the run, the one. To the 20. Still on his feet across the 35, out to about the 38-yard line. I cannot recall a game where the interest is so high. I don't care who you talk to, who you want to, I don't care if you're talking politics, it gets around to the Colts and the Patriots. That slant is incomplete, intended for Antonio Gates. Look at all the subplots. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Tony, Tony Dungy, Dungy, Bill Belichick. It's, it's, it's got it all, baby. On second and ten, Rivers out here in the flat. Tomlinson, Tomlinson taking the tackler head on and bouncing out of bounds at the 44. Rivers throwing and wide open at the 40 yard line and making the catch is Chris Chambers. And that was a good pass by Phillip Rivers. He had the entire pocket down around his feet and legs. He was able to maintain his concentration. He has the Minnesota secondary defending deep and Chambers curled back underneath. And he's had the Minnesota defensive line and linebackers draped over him a lot today. Rivers pumps, gonna go deep. Vincent Jackson at the goal line, tipped up incomplete. McCauley, the rookie, was there along with Darren Sharper, the veteran. That's the way if you're in a white shirt, you have to think. Rivers throws, sideline pass, and that's complete. Kasim Osgood with his first catch of the day. And that's a 14-yard gain and another first down for the Chargers with 3.31 to play. The Viking defense has had Rivers on the run all afternoon long. Well, it's because one of the big reasons is San Diego has not been able to run the ball. On first down. Quick pass. That's complete. And once again, it's Osgood and Osgood to about the 16-yard line. I mean, we all knew that the Minnesota defense, Leslie Fraser, their defensive corner, we know how good they are against the run. But did anybody think that at this point in time of the game, the Chargers would have 37 yards rushing? No, no not me. Here's LT. And LT can't quite get started. No. Just inside the 15 to the 13. Konechi Udeza makes the stop. Under three minutes to play. Without a huddle, Phillip Rivers tries to get this group moving. From the 14. River, short pass. That's complete. Tomlinson. Boy, again, Two a good tackle by Charles Gordon. Second year player. That was a good hit. Took the legs right out from underneath LT. Under 220 to play. into his face incomplete. Third and six. Here come the Vikings. 
the pass goal line and that is incomplete knocked down Antonio Gates the intended receiver boy Gates came up imploring the official on the side to give him the flag he's still pleading his case oh that's just good cut I think he's talking about the face mask I think at the very end of the play when the ball's getting swatted away I think the hand goes across the face mask Cedric Griffin but that happened so fast, it's easy to see why the official didn't see it. Fourth and six. Rivers on the move. On the move, looking, throws into the end zone. It is tipped and complete, and the ball goes over to Minnesota. Cedric Griffin got up to get a hand on it. Tough, tough day. You, you look at the numbers and you're going, can they really be true? This is Peterson. Look at Peterson. 30. Down the sideline and just pulled from behind. And the penalty marker is down. Well, that might be a horse collar tackle. That might be a horse collar tackle. And he had a conversation with Brad Childress about whether, <laughs> about whether to stay in the game or not. And he is. Personal foul. Defense number 20. Horse collar on the runner. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So that moves the ball even further. 35-yard pickup on the play. And that's it. for that's, I, Peterson wanted to stay in. And Brad Childress said no. He sent in Chester Taylor. He is two yards shy of an NFL record, and I wonder if Brad Childress knows that. Man, you got to let him back in. Ten yard per carry average. Coach, you got to play him. Chester Taylor takes the handoff. Taylor inside 35 to the 33 and Adrian Peterson is coming back into the game. Dan, is there anyone in the building who doesn't know that Adrian Peterson is going to get this handoff? Well, I guarantee you right now, the, the Chargers, they don't want it to happen here. Peterson. To the 30. Clock continues to move at 53, 52, 51 seconds. Let's see how much they give him on the play. They give him three on the play. That gives him 296 for the day. Well, I wouldn't want anybody to revise this and take one back. I'd, I'd try to get a couple more just to be safe. That's the second NFL record set that we have seen here today. And they're going to kneel on the ball. How about the performance by number 28 of the Minnesota Vikings? Our final score, 35-17 Vikings for Dan Deardorff, Greg